This is effectively the next installment of, of the lesson about evaluating limits analytically. Uh, the first that we dealt with sort of used a, a factorization method. So what we did is we took we took our rational expression, we factored the top, we factored the bottom, and generally we could cancel out some you know offending factor, and after that we would be able to evaluate our limit. Um, in today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about limits that involve radicals. And, and the strategy with radicals is generally, if you have a rational expression, so a fraction, you will multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of that radical expression. Uh, so let me give you an example of that. So for instance, if, if you had a, an expression that was, you know, 3 minus x over the square root of x plus 4, Oftentimes, the strategy that you can use, and, and this isn't a, a perfect example, I'll have, I have better ones that are coming out, but, but what you might try doing is multiplying the top and bottom by the square root of x minus 4. Right? Doing that will sort of transform the expression and often bring out something that can be factored or canceled or worked with. So I have two examples where we'll take a look at this, uh, so let's move on to the first one. So, you know, evaluate this limit. The limit as c approaches negative 1 of the square root of c plus 10 minus 3 all over c plus 1. So remember our sort of flow chart of work for limits. We always attempt our limit first by evaluating the expression for the value of c. So here, if I were to try and, and sort of plug in c being negative 1, I'd end up with the square root of 9 minus 3 all over negative 1 plus 1. That gets me 0 over 0. And actually, that shouldn't be an equal sign because um, something can't be equal to 0 over 0. So we say this This is approaching 0 over 0, and we remember that 0 over 0 means try harder, which means we need to do something. We need to try and factor and cancel. But but factoring doesn't work for this. When you have a radical expression, we're going to try using, you know, multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate. So so when I do that, you know, I have, I have my limit as c approaches negative 1. I have my square root of c plus 10 minus 3 all over c plus 1. And then I'm going to multiply the numerator by the square root of c plus 10 plus 3, and the denominator by the square root of c plus 10 plus 3. Okay, And, and this looks like it's going to be a train wreck, uh, but, but I promise it works out really well. So first, let's look in the numerator, where we actually have the expression times its own conjugate. What's going to happen is we're basically going to get, when, when we sort of foil this together, we're going to end up with a difference of squares. Right, so I still have my limit. The limit as c approaches negative 1. When, when I multiply the root c plus 10 times the other root c plus 10, I'm going to end up with c plus 10. Then, because this is sort of the difference of squares factoring, you'll get negative 3, that root, and positive 3 times that root. So those are effectively going to eliminate one another. And the last thing we'll end up with is the minus 9 from the negative 3 times the positive 3. Then in the denominator, you're, you're sort of tempted to foil that out the same way, and it, it's just a mess, so don't. What we're going to do is we're just going to leave it as c plus 1, and I'll leave this other thing here, the square root of c plus 10 plus 3. And, and you know, there we go. We, we, we did something. The question is, can this really be simplified? Does this really get any nicer? And, and the good news is that it does. If we look at what happens, this really should be kind of remarkable. We end up with c plus 1 on the top. Sure enough... That's the same as that c plus 1 factor that we decided to leave on the bottom. Right? So we notice these two things will eliminate one another. All I have enough now is the limit as c approaches negative 1 of 1 over the square root of c plus 10 plus 3. And remember, what are we supposed to do now? Right? Once you've worked through the limit, once you've done something, we're supposed to attempt to evaluate the expression again. So try again. Try plugging in negative 1 this time and see if it works. Right? My bet is that it will, because the thing that made this limit not work was this. This c plus 1 was the offensive factor all the way along. By doing this, this conjugate multiplication business, we were able to cancel those out. So let's, let's, let's see what happens. When I plug in negative 1, I get 1 over the square root of 9 plus 3, and that's 1 sixth. So this limit does exist. The limit is 1 sixth. So I have one more example that should be fairly similar. Um, I'd like you to pause the video, try this one on your own. Um, it, it should definitely be doable if you follow the process we used in the previous problem. So we begin by, by evaluating the function at 3 and seeing what happens. Um, you know, you're, you're going to notice here you're going to get 3 minus 3 over the square root of 4 minus 2. Sure enough, it's 0 over 0. I mean, no one's surprised. Um, most of your problems are going to end up this way, but every once in a while they don't. So it's worth checking. 
Zero zero means try harder, so we're going to use our conjugate trick. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of this radical expression. So the limit as x approaches 3, I'm going to have x minus 3 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 2 on the top. On the bottom, you know, I'm going to have this thing times its conjugate, and I'm going to sort of save some time and, and work here by just skipping that step. What I should end up with is x plus 1. That's going to come from this radical times this radical. The two sort of inner terms will eliminate with one another. And the last thing I'm going to have is my minus 4, which comes from the negative 2 times the positive 2. Okay. At this point, you know, we, we try and simplify this limit, so we're going to sort of see what we can do. I still have my x minus 3 and my square root of x plus 1 plus 2. It's all over, and if you look at this, this is going to turn into x minus 3, which is amazing, because it's literally exactly what we needed. Right? So these two things are, are opposites and, and eliminate. I have the limit as x approaches 3. And, and all that's left is the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. Now we can try evaluating again. When I plug in 3, I'm going to get the square root of 4 plus 2. And that gets me 4. This limit also exists, and it's 4. Right? So the short of this lesson is anytime you've got a, a, a limit you know, of a rational expression that has radicals in it, try multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate. Very, very commonly, it's, it's the strategy that you need to solve the problem.